Hey everybody, it's John from Seattle Coffee Gear. Today I'm in the commercial kitchen and we're not reviewing anything today, but we're gonna be talking about latte art and specifically we're gonna be talking about the heart, which is like the first or second pour that you usually learn. We're gonna cover kind of the basics of it and then we're also gonna go into some variations that you can do after you've learned the standard heart. And if you have more questions about milk steaming or about latte art tips and tricks, refining it and all that, we made two other videos on those two subjects specifically. So make sure to check those out as well. They're also on our channel. Uh, so check those out if you have questions on those specific topics. We're gonna be doing a more focused dive on just the heart today. So anything that you think I didn't cover here, make sure to check out those other two videos. So let's start out. Um, the first thing that I like to think about uh, when we're talking about any latte art, but you'll definitely be able to see it uh, with a heart, uh, is your cup. So I grabbed these two cups because they are clear. This is the not neutral uh, cortado glass, about four and a half ounces. Uh, and this is just kind of like a standard rocks glass, like a double rocks glass. Uh, and with these two cups, you can kind of see the difference here. If you look at the bottom of this, this one has a nice curve to the base of it. Whereas this one's a little bit more harsh, kind of comes more straight down and has a very flat bottom. Now I start out there because the shape of the bottom of the glass, much like this ceramic mug here, also not neutral, is going to impact the final shape of your pour. So it's gonna be easier to get a rounder, more symmetrical pour in a glass that has a nice round bottom, as opposed to something like this that has a little bit of a more square bottom to it. So while you're learning, I recommend starting out with something that has a curve to it. Um, we're gonna do some pours in both of these. I'll do more in this just so you can see kind of the mixing through the glass while we're pouring. Hopefully we'll see how that comes out, uh, but why don't we start out here? I'm gonna grab some water and we're gonna talk about the mechanics of it and then we will talk about the actual pour with some milk and coffee. So let's get started. So I have my cup here. I'm gonna pretend that about that much is my espresso, about that full there. I had a lot of coffee, so hopefully I'm not shaking too much. And the first thing that you're always gonna do when you're starting a pour after the espresso is in it is tilt your glass. So tilt your glass so the espresso is almost up to the lip of the cup and then we're pretending this is our milk and we're just gonna pour it um, probably where it's about deepest. So if you look at this cup, you can see about in the center right here is where it's gonna be the deepest. Uh, if I was gonna pour down here, um, that where it's pretty shallow and that can cause some bubbles which can affect the end of your design but if I pour in the middle then it's going to uh, have a little bit more I guess cushion to it and you'll get less bubbles. So I'm holding the glass at an angle. Um, you can also hold it on a countertop and do it this way if you need kind of a, a cheat code. It makes it a little bit easier to do it instead of having to just free hold it but holding it like this and take my pitcher and I'm gonna pour right in the deepest part and kind of swirl around till the cup is about two thirds full. A heart doesn't require as much uh, space in the cup because it's a more simple pour. So instead of going half full or a little less than that, I'm going about two thirds. Now that I have the cup here, I'm still gonna be tilted so you can see where my water line is there, and I'm keeping the water at the rim here. I'm doing that for two reasons. A, because that's gonna help the shape of the pour overall, and then B, because that's gonna allow me to get closer to the surface, which is gonna help with my contrast uh, as I'm pouring. It's okay if you drip a little bit, that means you're getting pretty close. So once I get to this point, I'm gonna start uh, not quite in the middle for a heart because that would push the design too far to the bottom of the cup. I'm gonna start kind of again in the higher like two thirds portion of the cup. And now all you're gonna do after you've done all that mixing is come really close and then pour pretty quickly, especially when you're starting out and then slow down, 
and come off to a tail. So I'm going to dump this back in here. I don't know why I did this with hot water. I'm going to burn myself, I swear. Now I'm going to do this a little bit quicker. So I have espresso in the bottom of the cup. I'm going to tilt it out here so it's close to the rim. I'm pouring in where the espresso is deepest to avoid creating bubbles. Got it about two thirds full. And then I'm starting in the, I guess the back two thirds of the cup, getting very close. And then I'm gonna pour really quickly while tilting the cup, raise up and finish through. And that is how you would make a heart. So now that we've talked about the mechanics of it, why don't we pull a shot, steam some milk and we'll actually pour it. All right, everybody, I have my espresso right here. It's all tamped down uh, nice and evenly. Today I'm using the Ladro Espresso, um, their main Ladro Espresso from Ladro Roasting. And I am using the R9 and I ground that on the Olympus from Eureka. Quick product shout out. And then I also have the um, fellow milk frothing pitchers here. Uh, you can also take a look at our milk pitcher comparison video that we did. If you want more info on this pitcher and the other ones that we have, take a look at that video. And let's go in here. Before I pull this shot, uh, one thing I do want to mention is when you're steaming milk, uh, you want to have, I mentioned this in the to-go latte art video, you want to have as much milk in your pitcher just as you need to finish the drink. So that might mean that you're pouring out some milk waste um, to be able to steam enough. I have about six ounces in here, so I'm probably going to pour out some of this after I steam my milk to be able to have just the right amount of liquid for this cup. We talk about that more in our other milk steaming videos. So here we go. I'm gonna pull that a little bit short just so we have a little bit more room to play with. And the next thing you wanna do before you pour is groom your milk. So tap out any large bubbles, kind of swirl it. Um, if your milk wasn't great before this, you can kind of fix some of those imperfections by doing this, but you're not going to get from crappy milk to amazing milk by tapping and swirling. It's just a fact of life. Um, you also want to make sure that your espresso is nice and homogenous, kind of all separated out there. And then once you're going to start the pour, you actually have to move pretty quickly. So here we go. So pouring in the deep end of the cup, about two thirds full right here at the top and pull through. And there we have a tiny little heart. The smaller your cup is, it's gonna be a little bit harder to get better velocity out of that. And because my milk and espresso both sat for a minute, um, that means that I didn't have quite the same ability to be able to fill up the whole cup. But that is the basics of how you would do that. So why don't we grab a larger cup, a larger pitcher, and we can see the differences in a larger cup. So here we go. All right, so 
Here we go again here into the deep part of the cup, mix it around and pour and pull through. And without any wiggling or anything like that, just pouring straight in, um, that's what the finished design looks like. We'll talk about some design variations um, a little bit later, but that's what that'll come out looking like. So why don't we pause there and we'll reset a little bit and then we'll come back into it and talk about some of the variations you can do with a heart. So we'll reset and come back. The first variation that we're going to do is pretty similar to what I just poured. What I just poured was like a monk's head where it's just that wrap design with a pull through. But then this one, I'm going to be rocking the pitcher, kind of wiggling the pitcher. You're going to see some lines start to form in the heart. So I don't know exactly what it's called, to be honest with you, but you'll see what I mean once we start pouring. So got my espresso here. my milk Shots are coming out looking pretty nice, I have to say. This one's pulling a little bit longer. I'm gonna use some extra coffee for that one. All right, so you will see what I mean here. So that one got a little funky towards the end, but that's okay. So here is what that heart would look like just because I was wiggling the whole time. Uh, and then I pulled through at the end to get that heart design. So that is what that would look like. So those would be the two main things that you can do with a heart uh, would be just a solid pull through and then kind of the fine lines one with the wiggle where you wiggle, lift up and pull through. So those would be the two. And then the rest of them are gonna be kind of variations of those two main patterns. So the next one we'll do will be a framed heart, but it'll be solid. So what I'm gonna do is pour just the first kind of monk's head and then I'll push into it with a second one and get it to wrap and then I'll pull through. So why don't we start on that uh, and see what that looks like. Okay, got my coffee all good to go here. For the purpose of this, of this video, I'm probably gonna stop this shot a little bit shorter just so I have some more room for this. Um, in a cafe environment, you obviously don't wanna do that because you'd be messing with your dial-in, but just for the purposes of showing you guys this pour, I will be doing that. So ignore my sloppy pour, I'm not the best at that angle, but it's kind of an idea of what that would look like um, with the frame around the outside edge there. So next one we'll do will be a slight variation of that, um, but we're gonna kind of wave this inner one so it'll have lines on the inner one and it won't, on, it'll just be a solid frame on the outer. So we'll do that and come right back.
All right, so here's that next variation. It has the frame around the outside and then those wiggles that I was talking about in the middle there. Um, and that's that. So you can change those out into other variations if you want. You could add extra stacks to that. So you could pour, instead of just a frame with two, you could pour one, two, three, I mean, as many as you want and can fit into the cup really. You can just keep going with those stacks uh, until you're done. I'm a little out of practice on the hearts, but um, the techniques will be all the same. Um, and hope you guys enjoyed this video. You learned something about pouring latte art and pouring hearts as latte art. Uh, if you have questions on any of the techniques in this video, mention them down below. Um, and then also take a look at the rest of our videos in kind of this latte art milk ste steaming series, unofficial series, um, and see if you can glean any other tips and tricks from those. If you have suggestions on more videos for us to do, leave us a comment down below on those as well. We'd love to hear that feedback too. We're in the commercial kitchen, so I need to mention it. If you have questions about commercial gear or about starting a coffee shop, adding coffee to a restaurant, bar, office, I'm happy to help or one of my coworkers would be happy to help and talk about that with you. Give us a call, uh, send us an email, happy to help you out there. Thank you guys again for watching. Have a great rest of your day.